Hi, everybody. Welcome to Astrology Unplugged. I'm Rick DiClemente here in the Pittsburgh area. This is episode 329. In case you're not used to us, you know Zoom problems here. So Eric is trying to work it out there, dear. Okay, Marcia, good to see you. Um, tonight, I'm going to cover Pluto. Because I've been pushing, I wrote, I wrote so much about Pluto for so many years that about five years ago, I realized I needed to shift gears and talk about Eris. And I've been talking a lot about Eris recently. Now I feel that we've gotten so far from Pluto, I think we need a reminder. We need a reminder on what Pluto is like. How do you deal with it? What has it been doing? What has been Plutonian? What has been Erisian? And I'll tell you a secret. People are starting to find out that it's Eris. I told you. They're starting to find out that it's Eris. All right. Now, Pluto, as you know, is the ruler of Scorpio. It has been said by the astronomers that it's no longer a planet. And they have no authority to, to declare such a thing. And they're wrong. It's still a planet. Astrologically, it's a planet. In their world, it's not a planet. Okay? So let's just separate that. Pluto is the ninth and final planet. Yes. Now, as you know, People are usually scared to death of Pluto because it has a lot of intensity behind it. I have definitely found in my years of working with it, I've become a lot more friendly with it. Uh, it's friendlier with me and is definitely much milder than Eris is. I'll talk a little bit about Eris tonight, but I want to talk a lot about Pluto so you can get this understood in your mind. The opening before we got on at 8.03, Susan was asking me about internal, external. That's a very good way of looking at Pluto. Pluto has a lot to do with what's going on inside. What are your passions inside? Are you expressing them? Are you owning them? Are you finding your courage? If not, the outside doesn't get together and have a committee that decides to jump on your face. That's not how it works. You invite the trouble. You invite the trouble. You either accept the solution and accept your courage or else you invite trouble. It's that simple. That's Pluto. Why? Because Pluto's job, one of Pluto's jobs is the garbage man of the Zodiac. And its job is to get rid of the garbage. I hate to say it that way. But if you're not evolving and you've been warned and you've been warned and you've been warned and you've had accidents and you've been warned and you're not getting it together and you're not moving forward and you're not evolving, Pluto's job is to get rid of you. Period. A country, a dog, a relationship, a car, a country, a person. Pluto's job is to warn you, to bring you strength. If you, if you end up denying it, you destroy yourself. Pluto didn't get rid of you. It's that simple. Now, I told you I was going to start by talking to you about what I have discovered uh, over the many years of calling Pluto's four stages. Now, I have, I have become an expert on Pluto only because I've worked so hard with it for so long. And I would say um, there was a time, I've been in Pittsburgh almost 20 years exactly, there was a time when, when Scorpios were at the bottom of my list. And I had good reason to put them there. Uh, and they have grown, in my estimation, with my experience, they're about fifth or sixth now. 
So that's a long way to move up from 12. And no, I'm not going to give you my list. Um, but I understand the bad ones are really bad. And the good ones are really good. They really are. So I have a lot more respect for Scorpios and Pluto than I did in the past. And with that came a lot more understanding about Pluto. Along came January 08. In January of 08, Pluto left Sagittarius and went into Capricorn. And it's been in Capricorn ever since. Since 08 till 2023, it recently spent a little bit of time coming out of Capricorn, going forward into Aquarius, and now it's back in Capricorn, where it will be till February. And then it goes back into Aquarius for 20 years. Now, Pluto is the part of you that gets sick of stuff. It's the part of you that gets sick of you when you're being weak. It's the part of you that's not very tolerant. It's the part of you that is hard on other people when other people are not brave, when they can't show and find their brave, your courage. Pluto's tough on you. Pluto's a tough, strong planet. Pluto is your passions. You ever listen to, even though she's not a Scorpio, did you ever listen and watch and feel Catherine Hepburn talking to you? While she's vibrating, Charles Bronson. I've said enough. That's Pluto. Teddy Roosevelt. They got balls. The four stages of Pluto, and I'm talking about when Pluto goes over you, one of your planets, or whether it is doing something in the sky that's affecting all of us, or whether it's going over some important point in your chart, back and forth it goes. Usually it goes back and forth, usually three times. Forward, retrograde, forward. It can go anywhere from once to seven times. Very rare that it goes seven. Usually it's three times. It goes over, it goes backward, retrograde, and it goes forward. So it's been doing that a lot, retrograding back and forth since 08. And now it's at the final stages where it's gone into the next sign of Aquarius. It's backed up into Capricorn and it's going to leave there finally. And when it leaves there, I will be talking to you clearly this coming February because when it leaves the stage, it has a finale, folks. It's going to pull the curtains on you and say, you think I'm gone? I'm not gone. It's going to have a finale for you that's going to encapsulate and summarize the whole 15 years of Pluto being in Capricorn. That's what it does. Now, that 15 years when Pluto was in Capricorn, we found our structures being challenged, that they were too weak, a lot of structures. Uh, what did we find out at our country level? We found out tons and tons and tons of corruption. That's what we found out. Um, that's what Pluto does. It shows you the corruption, and you have to deal with it to get it better. It's very, very common people during Pluto transits, they have to go down in their basement and separate all the all the sewage problems they've been denying and have not been looking at. And it won't deal with it. Pipe problems. Pipes are stuck up. Pipes are stuck. Stuffed. Well, when Pluto gets the it's just the end of the road. It's time to deal with it. So Pluto has four stages. America has been in stage one for a long, long time. America is definitely clearly in stage two now. It took a long time. Smack, smack, smack across my face. Stage one is denial. We don't have problems. Yeah, that says guys. Yeah, we don't have problems. We don't have any problems. Denial is stage one. And I don't mean the river in. Africa either. Denied. 
So I don't have to tell you what happens when your house is shaking and the boards are shaking. And I've been dealing with this church recently and I've been dealing with them for 20 years. And I saw Pluto in their chart and I started to see the cracks in their foundation. And I was telling them about it, explaining it to them. And what happened through a Pluto person, somebody came in and tried to take control of the church. The church collapsed partially physically and they got rid of the person the bad effect and they moved on to another building now they're reborn and they're doing better they own their power so stage one is denial and you can only go so long in denial before Humpty Dumpty is going to fall off the wall stage one is not one to mess with and a lot of people mess with it a lot of people end up with cancer, they end up with car wrecks, they end up with a lot of warnings, and after a while they don't realize that they've been warned. And after a while, Pluto's job is to stop warning. Stage two. Stage two is the one we're all in now. All of us. The whole world. We got a mess, it's really bad, and we got to deal with it. That's stage two. We got a mess. Is it education? It is your child's behavior. It is marriages. It is a legal system. Is it the education system? Is it government? Is it business? Blah, 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 blah. Is it the Supreme Court? Is it whatever? We got a mess and now we got to deal with it. Stage two. Stage two is very much like the coal miner who's been trapped inside with his buddies or her buddies and all the rocks are falling down. You can't even see anywhere. It's totally black. You're filthy. You can barely breathe and you got to work your butt off to survive. That's stage two. During stage two, there are no guarantees. There are usually lots of warnings. There are usually lots of symbols and signs being sent to you that you better get it together or you're going to die. That simple. Now, I don't, I don't have to do this too much, but once in a while, I'm going to look over in the corner of my screen and I can see Rick going, <laughs> and that's when I know I'm okay. Because Rick's really, really good with this stuff. Stage two means I don't care how hard it is, you got to come together, you got to go down the basement, have the courage to look, to see, to talk to the plumber, say, My God, it's going to be $8,000. What do you mean, $8,000? To face the music, to deal with it, to deal with the the timbers that are breaking and cracking, just like with our country. Look at all of the institutions that we have seen since 2008 that the pillars have crumbled. The YMCA, the Boy Scouts, all of them, the church, the Vatican. Have the faith to start dealing with it. And I've told you this before, and I'm going to harp on this a lot tonight. When you try, when you make an effort, Pluto will get behind you and help you. Pluto is your strength. It is your testosterone. When you do not try, you are in trouble. So stage two, there's no time period. Things will get better as you face things. You will have scary situations. You will have people both coming to help you and coming to hurt you. Maybe the same person doing both. A lot of times it will come to you through a Scorpio personality. It's always got to do with your balls, your intention, your courage, your strength. And it's all based upon what do you think you deserve? I told you, I have a good friend here in town that I've shared astrology with for a long time. And she has a lot of the old school 
astrology in her mind. In other words, she she says, Pluto's hitting my daughter. Things are bad. When are things going to get better for my daughter? Well, when do you think you're going to get better? It's not when Pluto lifts off. It's not when Pluto has a little meeting and says, oh, let's take it easy on her. That's the old school. Pluto will get better when she becomes more Plutonian. And owns her own stripes. So, she has a little baby. She marries a guy from the Middle East. They start to get divorced after the traditional two or three years of marriage in America. She says, he says, I'm going back home. And I'm taking the baby with me. And Pluto's on her son. Okay, time to call Rick. You don't you don't tell uh, a Middle Eastern man that he ain't going on with his son while Pluto's on your son and not have a hell of a thing to deal with. So how do we deal with this, Rick? How do we deal with it? First of all, you don't understand there are no planets that indicate it's going to go good, it's going to go bad. It's not how it works. I say, you tell your daughter, all she got to do is one thing. One thing, she's got to work on herself because he threatened to come kill her. You take my son from me, I'll kill you. So mama calls me. She wants me to know, is her daughter going to get killed? Do the planets say my daughter's going to get killed? No, don't say that. I said, it all comes down to one thing. Does she feel that she deserves to be harmed. Period. If she feels that she deserves to be harmed, then she will be harmed. I don't necessarily say he will kill her or harm her, but she's leaning in those directions. So she kept calling me and I kept saying, listen, I know you're looking outside what the guy's saying, all that stuff, and it's scary, and he's dark, and he's threatening, but you just keep reminding your daughter all she's got to do is determine that inside I am holy, and I don't deserve to be harmed. So a couple months passed by, and this went back and forth. And all of a sudden, she called me one day, and she said, you know what? You finally got through to her. She finally got the, herself straightened out inwardly. The guy decided to stay in America, to live near her, and to co-parent the same child. And I'm telling you, we're Susan. I'm telling you. Susan, this ain't got nothing to do with what the guy decided. It ain't got nothing to do with what happened outside of her. It's got everything to do with what she did internally. And that's why the man decided the peaceful route. Because the man is just the manifestation of what's going on in her internally. When we talk on this show, and this is a tough one to get to, the toughest one. When we talk on this show about how we're all one mind and one heart, that is the truth. It's very hard to absorb. It's hard to swallow. It's hard to understand because we're taught so much. The bad guy's going to come get me. But I'm telling you, there was no coincidence whatsoever once she started to get in straight inside that he backed off. I got another woman, Pluto Transit on her, years ago. She's working in an office. And a partner in the office embezzles all this money from this Taurus boss, Taurus owner. And you don't take money from a Taurus owner. Okay, get off easy with that. A lot of money. So what does he do? He sues her. She's a bookkeeper. I can't remember exactly. She had Pluto all over her. And she came to me with the normal, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Calm down. Calm down. 
all you got to do is decide that you don't do you don't deserve any harm from his lawsuit or from him and she blah, 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 goes on for months and months and months and months she finally called me one day i got a handle on it finally he called me one day and said he dropped the lawsuit when you're in my position, this will not shock you. You will expect these kind of results because you're working at the level where things work. So he backed off. So stage two can be really ugly. You can go up and down. You can get your butt beat in the alley. You can get your legs broken. You can get an Academy Award. Things can go really up and down wild and all that. But what matters is, how are you treating yourself? When there's a part of you that is yearning to go through your heart up into your brain, and it really wants to do this, and it's passionate about doing that, if you let that through, you will win. And if you don't, you will lose. That's Pluto. Stage three. Stage three is nothing more than stage two. It's a little more advanced and you've knocked some of the coal out of the way, some of the rocks out of the way. You're still trapped in the cave, but you can see some daylight. Wow, ooh, I can't get out, but I'm breathing a little bit. Some Americans, some American institutions, some worldly institutions are starting to get tiny examples of stage three. Most of us are still in stage two, in my opinion. And stage three is, is all because of the work you've done. Being honest with yourself is always the key phrase with all these planets. And stage four is nothing that you can't guess. Stage four is when you're out of the coal mine, you're cleaned off, you got a shower, you get up on your horse and you ride away because you've conquered it. You've conquered that energy. And stage four is tough. And very few people make it through to stage four because it's so demanding. And we're not in a country that trains us thusly. We're not, you know, when you look at the American Indian, they're trained thusly. They're trained to be a warrior. And I have to explain that to you. So that's what it is. Stage one, there's no problem. Stage two, oh, hell yeah, there's lots of problems. And I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Stage three is you've been working at it on cleaning it up, trying, starting to see the light. And hopefully stage four, you get to where you can see rather uh, clearly. So it's very hard to explain to you because all of you are being hit by Pluto at different times. I had it when I'm 20. I had it when I was 24. I had it a couple of years ago because let me show you on a zodiac here. I'll show you where the planets are right now. I don't know why I put my glasses on, because I take them right off. I don't know what that's about. Okay. Okay, this is the zodiac showing you the 12 signs of the zodiac on the outside. This is where the planets are at 8 o'clock tonight. All right. I'm still getting a hard time with this. All right, here we go. Okay, here you can see, here you can see that Pluto came into Capricorn. This is Capricorn. These are the houses. These are the signs. That's why I'm using this dial, because it shows you both. In 2008, Pluto went into Capricorn, and it went back and forth, 09, 010. 11, 12, 13, back and forth and back and forth all those years. And it's only in Capricorn for about 15 years. While it's opposition cancer, it's there for about 25 years. 
So since Pluto has an oval orbit, it stays in some signs for a short while, such as Gemini. It's only here, it's here for 30 years. Sag 15. 30 years, 15. So you get the idea. It has nothing to do with the sign. It has to do with the orbit. And, the, and Pluto goes way out, comes way out, comes back near the Earth, goes way out, and that's why. Okay. So since 08, Pluto has been in Capricorn. We've been bitching and screaming about that. And look what it did to things that are Capricornian. All things belong to certain signs, whether it's a car, a dog, your esophagus, your head, your chair. All things are ruled by certain signs. Institutions are ruled by Capricorn. Social institutions. Capricorn. That's why since 08, it even started in 07 with the collapse of the banking industry. And everybody talks about the, the fall in the real estate market and all. That was all Pluto getting ready to go into Capricorn in, in January of 08. So now it's at the very end. It's gone into Aquarius. It's gone back into Capricorn for a short while till February. Then it's coming back to stay. It'll be here for 20 years in Aquarius for 20 years. You can see right now it's at 2839. It's back at the very edge of Capricorn and it's going to turn around. It's retrograde now. It'll turn around and go direct. Okay. Besides the fact that it's going to do those things, it's going to pick up that sign's energy in general for everybody. This is not the age of Aquarius. It's not the ages, but this is the Pluto and Sag era. This is the Pluto and Capricorn era. This is the Pluto and Aquarius era. And that's why you feel the way you do in general. This has nothing to do with it going over one of your planets or it going over your mid-heaven or it making it a right angle to your sun. That's personal. So things happen that are personal, things happen that are not. Now, there's another side to Pluto that I cannot explain to you. Rick can't explain to you. Nobody can explain to you. And that's called the karmic phase, the karmic side. In other words, do you think 2,000 people had bad charts on the day that the Titanic sank? No. Yeah. There weren't 2,000 people, although 2015, something like that, died. Do you think they all had bad charts with Pluto on the day in April? No. Some things are global. Some, some things are collective. We don't have any idea why. We don't have any idea why this happens. We just don't know. What about... What about six million people dying in the Holocaust? Was what chart was that happening in? Was that happening in the first Jews chart? What was it happening in? We don't know. So there are things about the outer planets that we just don't know because it's too big for us. And maybe someday when we're in astrology 202 in heaven, we'll get to find out those kind of answers in class. <laughs> I sure hope so, but I just give up. I, I can't figure it out. It's too much for my brain. I let it go. Now, if you have a lot of Pluto in your chart, and Daddy has a lot of Pluto in his chart, and Sis and Brother have a lot of Pluto in his chart, I cannot tell you why, but it's very common. It's very common that one family will have a whole lot of Pluto, and another family won't have any. I don't know why. I can observe, and I can tell you my, it's my experience, and I can tell you, well, if three Scorpios in this family, and the other child has Pluto opposite the moon, that's very common. We don't know why. Families have certain feels to them, certain energies. 
Okay. Now, next thing I wrote down on my list here. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, when Pluto is on you, or like it's on the sun of the GOP's chart, or it's on the moon of the Democrats' chart, or it's on the chart of the EPA, because places have their own chart too. Do you think those places can fake it? Do you think somebody can fake out a Pluto transit? Neptune's been all over the U.S., all over the GOP's chart. Do you think they could fake it? You can't fake it. What's going on in the USA's chart? Pluto's everywhere. Do you think we can fake it? No, you can't fake it because it's part of reality. It's not some planet out there deciding what it's going to do to us. It's part of our nature. And if you take a look at the United States chart, Okay, here is uh, the USA's chart. All right, this is the chart back in 1776. Pluto was at 28 degrees when we started the country. And all these years later, the Earth is in the middle in astrology, Western astrology. Pluto has gone 240 years going through all these times and he got to certain places, caused the Civil War, got to certain places, caused 9-11, certain places, presidents get assassinated. Pluto's just been going round and round and round. And all these years, 240 years later, just last year, Pluto returned. Pluto returned to the same spot it started at. Okay, so you've all heard of your Saturn return in your chart every 28 years. This is every 250 years. So when Pluto came back last February, and all of a sudden things became, all of a sudden things became grave in this country. They've been grave all along. You just wouldn't let go of stage one. That's all it was. Through 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, we were still in stage one. Denial. I'll just keep going to work, pay my bills. Things will be okay. And as the Pluto return got closer and closer and closer, we got stage two. Stage two is, oh, shit. Things are scary. Things need worked on. That's what stage two is. Oh, my God. We really have to. What's the word? Everything must go. It's like when a company liquidates. When you just got to break it down and just deal with everything. That's what stage two is. And the better, the more honest you are about facing stage two, the better off you'll be. Because you're dealing with reality. Stage one's not reality. Stage one's denial. Neptune. Stage two, I don't like it. It's terrible. All the pipes are leaking. But we're dealing with it. That's stage two. And what do you see around you now? I guarantee you, everybody sees stage two all around you. Whether it's money, whether it's relationships, whether it's buildings, whether it's education, everybody's in stage two with everything now. And stage two is no picnic because it's real common when you're in stage two to be tempted to do this. That's the problem with stage two. You want to blame them and they want to blame you. All, all the time blaming is going on. It's always wrong. It's always inaccurate. But you're still dealing with it. You still got somebody blaming you. You got Democrats wanting to kill Republicans. You got Republicans wanting to kill Democrats. You can understand partially why they're thinking that way. But it's not a solution. Because after all, it's one country. 
just like it's one mind. So we can see it was clearly in stage two. And in stage two, you just have to work together to work together to solve the problems. Now, it's no laughing matter, but if you don't work on it, this, Susan, this will come get you once again, what I was telling you earlier. If you don't work on the problems together, then other countries will jump on you. The outer world, other countries will jump in your face. If you do work on things honestly, earnestly, other countries will try to help you. There's just no magic about it because they can sense it. They're not going to help us if they see us trying to screw everybody else. And they are going to help us if they see we're trying to help out. And even though things are so bad, people keep looking to the United States for the leadership because we've got leadership qualities in the chart. Okay, so... When Pluto is on you individually, you will find things like this happen. People will try to go behind your back at work. People will try to badmouth you and blackball you. People will try to screw you in this way and that way. They will sick the lawyers on you. All these things are very, very common. Now, when you look at the people you work with, who keep their head above water, who don't feel that they deserve to be screwed, those things won't happen to them. It won't happen to them. You call what you want to call. You feel what you deserve, and what you deserve is what you get. Now, I don't think, and I've given us a lot of thought, I don't think that it's black and white at all times. I don't think so. And I've given this a lot of thought, which is why I've not got a second book out there. Because I'm looking for, to solve the absolute. To me, it's got to absolutely be true or it can't be true. That's a rough one. So I got a woman come to see me. 15 years ago in my office. Seven planets in Aquarius. She's got a mess in her life. I don't know why she got a mess in her life. She's an artist. She's very nice. She's very talented. She's riding through Pittsburgh one day. She looks outside and she sees a bus run over another woman and kill her. And of course, months later, she comes to me to talk about it. And I feel terrible. And she kept hearing me say that she caused the accident. And I kept telling her, you didn't cause it, but inside your mind, something in your mind caused you to be available to see it happen. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. So she felt guilty about it. And then she kept blaming me because I kept telling her she was responsible. And I didn't tell her she was responsible. I kept telling her, why did this show up on your movie screen? Why did you see it, this woman get run over by a bus on your movie screen? And I'm on the other side of the bus. I didn't see it. That's exactly what we're talking about. And if you're a Course in Miracles person, this is the very heart of it. This is the very heart and center of the Course. Okay? Because they're talking about all times you are seeing on that screen what you think is happening. What Nick told us about last week. What we're seeing on that screen is what we perceive about ourselves. So in other words, we're always judging ourselves. We actually think that there are other people out there and there aren't. But that's a hard one to swallow. So let's go back to the United States here. Sure. 
So I, I don't have to follow suit with you. I just ended up with that woman getting nowhere. And I felt sorry for her because she walked away with those kind of false beliefs. And that's how it was. So so in the next few years, so this is going to go back and forth. It's going to go back and forth. It's going to go into Capricorn. Here's the edge right here. Go back into Aquarius, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Meanwhile, while it's doing it, Kyra, or, uh, Harris, Harris is sitting here. Harris is right here right now. Harris is right here making a right angle to Pluto. It's at 24. Pluto's at 27. It'll get further apart, and the Pluto and the Aries will start to separate. Thank God, because that's one reason it's been so hard, is we've not only had the Pluto return, we've had the Pluto square to Aries the last five years, and that's almost unheard of. Now, in my last couple of weeks, I have come, I don't know how to explain this to you. I get to where I have intuitive hits now and then. I get into long periods of, I don't know, I don't know. And the reason I get the hits is because I go through those periods of, I don't know, I don't know. And all of a sudden, the last couple of weeks, I started to get the hit, which means I do know. So what I'm sensing What I'm sensing with these great big planets on us right now is these big planets. Remember I told you in, 19, in 2005, we get 80 new planets. 80. I don't care how far out they are. They're still circling the sun. That was symbolic that the human mind was capable of discerning those types of new energies psychically. And it's my opinion now, and I try real hard not to be, uh, uh, see what I want to see. It has become clear to me recently that Eris and Pluto are on us for a favor. They're doing us a favor. While it looks like these two could knock us off the map real easily. Because Eris is much more discordant than Pluto is. So what I'm saying to you, and I've told you in the last couple of weeks, we have all been feeling very Erisian. What I'm saying to you tonight is we're all been feeling very Plutonian. And this is why tonight is happening. I'm reminding you of the Pluto essence that grew in our minds from 08 to 2023. It didn't go away. And what I've been trying to say with people and other astrologers is too many people keep looking at what's happening now saying it's Plutonian. And it's not. It's Arisian. But what you need to see is both of them. Okay. Then for a while, we got to see both of them squaring each other. Now we're going to start to see them separate. So the Pluto part of you gets fed up. The Aries part of you gets fed up. The Pluto part of you wants you to own your uh, courage. The Aries is very similar. Pluto is, I'm going to warn you for a while, and then things are going to get bad. Aries doesn't warn you. Aries Look what's happening in Hawaii. Eris is very tough because Eris is very pro-evolution too. It wants you to get with it and get better, etc. But our problem is, here, here's what I'm saying to you. I never knew till recently how powerful Eris was in the United States chart. And I've been telling you all along, the U.S. has a weak chart. It has a weak chart. But when I found out last week or a couple of weeks ago that Eris, let me get it on the screen. 
U.S. has a weak chart. It just does. Okay. When I found out that the USA's chart was born with Eris opposite Sun, Jupiter, Venus, then I told you last week, these three planets are born with an opposition to Eris. Well, when you're born with an opposition to a planet, it's like you're getting these tattoos? Okay, well, you're getting these too. You don't want them? I don't care. You're getting those? We're going to get these. So, Sun, Jupiter, Venus. Sun, Jupiter, Venus was an attempt to be happy America. We had all the green corn lands and cornfields, and everything was just fine. Until 2005, we discovered where Eris is and where it was. So now is when I'm seeing hope. Because I look across the fields, in my opinion, I look across the fields of Americans. And I see a lot of people who are, I'm all going to say lazy. It's not the word. But we're just nonchalant. Nothing can happen here. Well, when you're born with Sun, Venus, and Jupiter opposite Eris, I can guarantee you things are going to happen here. You cannot stop it. You're going to have a Rizian energies in your face at all times. What does that mean? What it means is when it comes down to it and things get tough, Americans are able to dig deep and pull Eris out. We're able to. The same Americans that reached deep in 1930s, etc., and pulled out Pluto to stand up to Hitler. That was a repressed energy. Now it's Eris, it's Eris time. So what you're going to start seeing now is people doing miraculous stuff. And you're already seeing it. And I talked to... Um, I talked to Naomi and I said, what the hell do us, you Australians think of us Americans? And she's just going like this. And then I talked to Jane last week and she's going like, what's going on in America? And we look at each other in America and we go, oh, no. well, somebody's got to know. Well, what's happening now is the inner networks, and you're even seeing that in, in science magazines. You're seeing it in books now. What are we seeing? We're discovering the inner neural networks, the neuroplasticity of the mind. We're discovering all these new avenues. And those avenues are not coincidental. Those avenues are, co are happening at the same time that we need them to. It's not a coincidence. So we're becoming more and more capable of dealing with powerful universal quantum energy than we were before 2005. 2005, we were watching Dancing with the Stars. Not now. We all know that things are dire. We're all watching Hawaii burn. We're watching their friends in Houston bake. But it's no coincidence that our literature and our scientists and our physicists are getting up to speed on quantum possibilities. And those quantum possibilities are directly related to neuroplasticity of the brain. That's the new word. That's the ability of the brain to change. It's almost like the brain explores and changes as, it, as it's exploring. It's like a rubbery, plastic, Aries uh, explorer out there 
that's making the way as we need it. If you've all watched these uh, videos on um, uh, spores and you've watched how they grow and they don't even have a brain, they just know where they're going without a brain. They just can sense where they're going. We're starting to see this in all fields of science. We're seeing all fields of science starting to merge together with all the others. We're starting to see, Liza was telling me today about some people and um, how we're getting more tapping on the brain happening in these different machines that are trying to uh, stir up, uh, what's the word, certain brain paths and certain areas of the brain. To treat uh, to depression. To, to treat depression, et cetera. Yeah, what's happening everywhere. Well, isn't it interesting that it seems like America's skipping a step. America is going from this kind of laid back, complacent place to this really advanced place so quickly. And remember, America has this phenomenal Uranus in our natal chart right on the descendant. And that's how Uranus works. It works quickly. It works fast. So, what you're going to continue to see in the next couple of years, you're going to start to see Pluto's imprint a little more clearly. Its shoe print will look more like the Pluto shoe. And you're going to start to see the Eris shoe print more Erisian. Thank God you're going to start to see some people starting to look at Eris. Okay? What did I hear recently? I don't know if this is right. I heard there's a new variant named Ari. Go ahead, Ari. honey. The, the new COVID variant. New variant named Eris. That's wild. I mean, it. And it's I, perfect. It's just yes. it's how spontaneity works. We're getting a new, that's what we need is another COVID variant. Well, who, in a, who in the world thought of naming it Eris? Mm hmm. Mm hmm Okay. So, that's an intriguing factor. Now, um, it's very hard to be an astrologer for people and not have the Disney end to all your stories. The Walt Disney end, <laughs> where everybody's happy and, and the princess is happy and all that. It's really hard not to see it. But let's take a look back at the USA's chart. So, as Pluto gets further, Pluto will get farther from its opposition to the sun. It's been opposite the sun for several years now, and it gets further away from the sun. We're going to start getting less and less pressure on ourselves for our identity crisis, which has been so strong recently. We're going to start to see the Pluto air is square starting to become less of a square. We're going to start to see Eris become farther away from its opposition to Saturn. So what's going to happen now is we're going to have to start finding, you know we have this neuroplasticity. We're going to have to start finding avenues for it to be expressed. We've got greater and greater plasticity, but do we have curriculum in the high schools and the colleges that can mirror that? Do we have social ways of behaving that can mirror that and allow it to happen? So you see that everything is incredibly interrelated which sounds a lot to me like stage two and stage three. So what the night has been about is to remind you, re-educate you about the Pluto issue. And the Pluto issue is, is well into stage two and, and Pluto is more patient. And the more you work in stage two, the more light you will see and the more odds are 
you will start to see stage three. Eris isn't like that. Eris is like, what do I have to do or do I need to send much more discord to you right now? We don't know enough about Eris yet. The first book on her wasn't written till about 2000. Wow, 2011 or so, 12. So we're just discovering what Eris is like. And also recently, we've been unable to see what Eris is like because Pluto has been there and vice versa. So we're going to start to see what Eris is really like because she's going to get away from Pluto. We've known what Pluto has been like since 1930. So what does this mean for people? What it means energetically is I'm not putting up with it anymore. I'm not putting up with it anymore. We cannot put up with this anymore. Whether it's uh, um, remuneration for the American Indian, whether it's the black people uh, getting repaid, whether it's this school, that school, whatever it is, we're, we're starting to see this ridiculously timed, okay, Chuck, this ridiculously timed white movement. It's no time now for a white movement. It's time for an us movement. And I'll guarantee you Astrologically, the more we press on the white movement, the more things are going to go downhill, especially for the white movement. So I'm not saying anything new to you tonight. I'm at the end of my discussion, really. Um, but I wanted you to become more aware of what is what is Plutonian. I want you to go back into your lifetimes and you can see where Pluto was on you, maybe in college, maybe early in your marriage, you could see where Pluto did things to people. And you said, what got into Rick lately? Boy, he's different. You can see what Pluto did to people at different times. Well, Eris is totally different because she's really slow. <laughs> she's real slow. She's going to take many years to get past the spots that she's on. But the thing together, can you imagine? Let's get a panel together here. What's it like when you put Pluto and Eris together? I'm asking you folks, what do you think the energy is like? Don't worry about how and all. But Pluto and Eris are combining their energies now inside of us, inside of the heart of evolution. What do you think those two energies are going to do when they combine? Feel free to turn your microphone on. Revolution and change. Yes, ma'am. Talk more about that. Revolution and change. More about that. I don't, I'm, you know, old, I'm 49. Uh, some of you are older here. I don't know if you have all seen the the climate. I don't, I don't just mean weather in the U.S. and worldwide where the intensity is just, you can't, you can't turn a blind eye anymore. And like right. many of us have, it's impossible. You have to be living under a rock. It's, it's, it's do or die. <laughs> and hopefully we don't die. Uh, I have a, a lot of hopes for the fact that uh, Pluto will be trining Uranus at some point. And maybe that will help that. Um, oh, sure. Well, yeah. Yeah. The, the fact that we're going to start integrating that using our mind for for good, for the good of all, for the good of us, 
Um, and perhaps you can see step, step one of all of this is we got to wipe out this racial residue. Mm -hmm. The problem is not uh, racial. It's so deep. It's that not is so racial. Deep. Mm -hmm. It's and it's everywhere. I mean, it's everyone and everywhere. I don't know if any. A lot there. of people think that the problem is simple and it's them. Yeah. Boy, is that easy. And mm -hmm. it ain't right. Mm -hmm. And the orange one is, is definitely the leader with this kind of mentality. We're still dealing with the orange one. Every day on the news, the orange one, the orange one says this. The orange one's got a new pop machine out today. Okay, just this ridiculous stuff that we're following this guy. Uh, those of you that are sending me messages, I'm just going to apologize to you because I don't have time to read them and respond. Very good, Claudia. I, I, I think I think what, what's interesting about what you said is I think that's what Eris did. Mm -hmm. Eris came and scared the shit out of us. That's what she did. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pluto was on the verge. Mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of things going on in Pluto. And Eris came out of there. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah? So next year, Pluto will retrograde again. It'll yeah. go to two degrees. It'll retrograde back to 29. Um, I'll, I don't know if it's 29 or 27. I think it's no, 20, it's not 20. going to go. It's not going back into Capricorn. After I've already checked, when Pluto goes into Aquarius, it's staying there. Well, I just looked it up, and there's it's going to do another round. I thought so too, but regardless, I, it's like this year, next year. There's a big, big come to Jesus. <laughs> with ourselves yeah. with our with ourselves our nations um exactly and it's really really um uh, like we talked about the other day the implications what a good exactly. word the implications are just so so here's my screen acting funny again this week I'm not messing with it. I don't want to happen what happened last time. It already did. It just threw me out. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's fine. Anyhow, you were saying about it going back and forth. Yeah. So if anybody has any, I don't know if anybody. What I'm asking you all, what do you see when you mix the two together? Go ahead, Susan. If I'm following this correctly, then Pluto is the energy that gives you the ability to end a very bad relationship. And well, Eris one, is one the energy. The one of and Eris gives you the energy to, if necessary, do it by upending your date spaghetti into his lap and walking out. I, I don't have any comment on that. I don't know how to answer that. Uh, I don't have to answer it. Pluto certainly will bring you the energy to bring it to an end. And it brings a lot of relationships to an end to your favor. Yes. Eris, Eris is more of a, if you guys don't get it together, I'm going to keep feeding you unbelievable disruption. It's more of a Collective issue. When you get out that far beyond Pluto, those planets are dealing at a collective level. I like your I like your example, except I think the spaghetti plate's bigger than you think. <laughs> That's where I had a problem jumping on board with it. Go ahead. Because there's something deeper. Um, I'm trying to separate it in my mind and just look at Pluto first. And Pluto is the masses because death is the great equalizer. And it gives you that force to go to war to where you're willing to fight to the death for the sake of change. 
Eris is another deep subject. And I think part of the problem here is that you have these two inner drives that are both so powerful, I think it's got people losing their minds. Of course it does. How you separate which part is which, I think takes more individual study on Eris to catch up to our Pluto understanding. Just a thought. Continue on that. We've been able to see what people stepping forward are like when they have Pluto conjunct the sun, Pluto conjunct the midheaven, and so on and so forth. We don't have as many astrologers, as you said, working with Eris to plug it into the charts and find the differentiations. I think we need more concerted efforts on research on that so that we can wrap our minds around how does it manifest. Uh, by the way, excuse me, um, Claudia is right. Pluto's going to go back into Capricorn a second time. So I was checking on that. I but think, I too, it's uh, interesting that um, I think sometimes the Indian astrologers go more frequently into looking at what do they call it? Remediation, where you're trying to compensate for a difficulty. Right. Right. And um, sometimes they even suggest like five to 10 carat crystals in a ring. We can't all wear a 10 carat crystal so easily. So honestly, I think the other thing is looking at behaviors and things we can do. Like if you want to mitigate Saturn, volunteer with old people. Spend time with them. If you're looking to remediate Pluto, go to that funeral you don't want to go to. Do something with those who are dealing with bereavement. Death. Look how death is changing. Everybody, oh, yeah. They're going towards, from the grave, they're going more towards uh, the ashes. Yes. Um etc cetera, etc cetera. the thing i'm getting at is the pluto and the eris in us is going to become louder and we're not a loud country believe it or not we're a polite cancerian country but that part of us is going to scream its way to the top somehow we don't have time for it anymore I think, too, if you're looking at uh, the the, um, the Zodiac with the early signs being less mature, we came out of the gate yeah. as cancer. So how much of that is lagging behind, oh, we want to stay in our shell. That's we don't want to get out. That's right. That's right. Whereas other nations, number one, They've been around longer, many of them. They have philosophically looked at things more progressively because over time they've gotten past some of their bugaboos. And, and, and they can't say, they won't say it can't happen here because it has happened there. Oh, yeah. I also wanted to say for anybody who has the capacity with the knowing how to work with an ephemeris, and if you have a little bit of interest in history, go through the U.S. chart and look what happened when Pluto hit angles. Look what happened when it hit planets. That will give you a bigger understanding. And we're going to see Pluto connecting with the moon in the U.S. chart. The, the natal U.S. moon will will have that in progression. Aquarius, yeah. That's what right. happened the first time around? That's right. And that's what you see uh, talked about a lot in Cosmos and Psyche, him talking about each Pluto transit, what happened in our history. You're right. It's going to get to our moon in about, what, 10 years, 15 years? Somewhere in that vicinity, yeah. That's about the right four, 14, 14 years or so. Yeah, when it goes over our moon, our second most important planet, and the planet that rules our 
our, our emotions, our, uh, our traditions. The psyche of the nation, the sense of family, patriotism. Yeah. So yeah. somewhere along the way, we need to start making preparations for what's happening in the next 15 years. That is the tide that we are slowly feeling build up. This water is all moving. It's going to move us over there. We got to be ready. What does that mean, though? We got to be ready. That's an easy statement. What does it mean? What are we going to do? What leaders are we going to follow? What new books are we going to read? How's it going to come about? Does it come, come about through new TV shows? It's got to come about somehow. Teachers There's got to, to be something men. to end the complacency. Linda, go ahead, dear. Hold on, Rick. Linda, you are muted. Still muted. You are muted. I'm, you... I'm muted. <laughs> okay. And Shelby says hi, by the way. She's been hi, here. Hi, Shelby. The she, she's Shelby. Okay. Um, I keep thinking about, if we think about Eris and Pluto, you know, I, I keep thinking that the shadow side of both of them is so right. visible. Right. And... And everything, everything that we do has to take that into consideration. I mean, one of the things that, like, if you look at the, oh, just the the corruption. <laughs> I mean, it's so Plutonian. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, oh my God, it's like pretty 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 soon we're going to find out that some of these guys have bodies in the basement. I mean, that is how bad it is. And, you know, oh, God. And, we're, and we're still at this moment where where we, when you want to talk on the Plut the Plutonic or the Plutonian side, we're still in denial about this stuff. This stuff comes out in the news and we just go, oh, oh you know, no, 30, stage eight, one, stage 38 one. trips from billionaires, Clarence Thomas. OK, oh, so much, you know, nobody's going to do anything about that. Nobody's going to do anything about this or anything. So so we have we have that. We have that. And then we have this tremendous problem with race in this country, which is, I think, the heart of where Eris comes in, into play, you know, in our chart. You know, it's always been there, uh, but we didn't know. OK, and now, you know, we had a shot at getting things right after the um, the civil rights movement, if we had just kept sort of kept moving in that direction. But we no, we didn't do that. No. And so now I'm going to deal with all this. And this morning on Twitter, I follow a guy named Mike Freeman, who's a, a, an NFL sports writer on U, in USA Today. And he's African-American. And we're kind of friends on Twitter. We like talk back and forth. And he he put up something today where a fairly famous political figure, not in office, but, you know, one of these guys behind the scenes uh, was saying that that white people are going to be extinct. And, I mean, and we're both going, what could you even be talking about? Oh, God. I, mean, I mean, and when in the so I mean, and that is so shadow side of Eris, you know, this idea that the that, that instead of including people, what we're doing is being so, you know, they're being so afraid that they have to, you know, lock the doors and, you know, um, be upset that the fact that there's a, a person over here who's gay or somebody who's black or somebody who's Hispanic or somebody who comes from, you know, Australia or whatever, um, you know, can't be any good because they're not us. And um, so, so I think that for me, how I'm sort of thinking about those energies is just looking at who's dealing with them, you know, who's, who's moving forward, who's trying, you know, for, you know, who's trying to be inclusive, what political figures, and I'll, I'll point to the, the governor of Pennsylvania, who wants to work across the aisle to get things done, who wants, who wants to, you know, he doesn't care who's, who crosses that bridge in Philadelphia, he just wants it fixed. 
And I think there are figures and people who seem to be moving in that direction. But then there's this other, you know, we're just going to have to watch this all hit rock bottom because some of these people are going to get taken off the board. I mean, that's just, you know, and it's going to be one way or the other. Maybe they'll die or maybe they'll just be so disgraced they'll go into, to, you know, live in their, you know, their little crowd core board house somewhere. But it's, I think it's going to be really hard. I think it's going to be hard. I think we're going to have to be patient. I think we're going to have to not get, you know, I hate the word triggered, but triggered by some of the things we see in here, you know, like to, to give up or to quit, you know, but we also have to, um, you know, be discerning. I mean, I don't know much about Aquarius. I dated an Aquarius when I was in high school. I, I, I don't know much about Aquarius, Aquarius other than I don't, they're not very reliable in my, my, my experience. Oh, sure, they sure are. Well, they can't, I mean, they can be maybe, but not in the dating phase, well, at least for me. Well, I, that, that's really particular when you, but I think, when you dated one of them. But I think Pluto going into Aquarius is also going to involve more discernment because it's a mental sign. It's a, it's, it's a sign of the mind and maybe we'll see things more clearly. Um, and maybe we'll see things with more depth and more understanding. Uh, but I think we're going to have, I think we're going to have to deploy those abilities because um, it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's my, my view of it because these people are out from under their rocks and showing the, their true natures. And that's good. That's a, that's, a <laughs> good that's a good statement, Linda. Yeah. Uh, hold on, Peggy, please. Okay. Liza has her hand up. Um, uh, all these comments that everybody's making and what you're talking about is really, really, I think, uh, helpful to all of us. Um, I was thinking about the nature of Pluto in terms of um, wealth. You know, Plutocrats are people with a huge amount of wealth and about how so much of the world's uh, wealth is concentrated in the hands of so few people. Um, Pluto also has to do with wealth underground, like you know our natural, uh, like oil and gas and and metal, precious right. metals and things like that. Um, and uh, as Pluto goes into Aquarius, um, maybe some of the positive things that will happen with that is that 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 system of money being in the hands of a few people will be broken down. Or um, you know there will be a new tech Aquarian technology related to energy that might help the the, the world. Also, um, you know, part of Eris's job I think is to help break down that system. Like uh, Occupy Wall Street was certainly a very Arisian type of movement, and and, and um, perhaps we'll all get we'll get ourselves together enough to oppose the horrible, horrible side of capitalism, which is, seems to be the- Well, reality. why don't you tell them what you just did? Come, um, on, come on, let's get you on camera. You, I want I want you to tell them what you just did because it's a big deal. It is a big deal. And then we'll get to you, um, Peggy, hold on, please. You, can you come over here with us, please? Uh, She's been involved heavily with the <clears throat> Democrats on the state level and standing up to some fracking companies oh. that have wanted to do what with the fracking? Um, I uh, am working for a, uh, a very progressive candidate for county commissioner in my county, and um, he's very much an environmentalist, and he went to... Um, um, was invited to go to this meeting at a township in our county um, where uh, there was a company who wanted to uh, put uh, fracking waste down uh, an old uh, fracking well in this county. And um, the, the, uh, it was supposed to be a public meeting with people from the fracking company and from the EPA there. And those, the EPA and the fracking company tried to call it this in on Zoom rather than being there in person, which was a violation of the, the regulations. But anyway, when my friend got to this meeting, 
he said he just looked at what was happening. There were a lot of people in the community there waiting for these other the EPA and this company to, to start. And he said, you know what, this is really bigger than politics. It's bigger than my campaign for this office. And he said he knew we had to do something about it really quickly. So um, he called a, a meeting, where, which was just an amazing amount of people for, for my county to show up at. And for this township, people were really concerned. Farmers and people lived on this land for um, gener generations. So um, there was a big meeting and it was explained what was really going on. Um, what it generated was a lot of people from the whole county, just not this township, writing letters to the EPA because th there was a deadline of less than a week to get comments in because they waited so long to, to, to do what little they did to even publicize the whole thing. So um, then we tried to organize a bus trip to the EPA in Philadelphia to have people protest and meet with the EPA. And it was such short notice, we weren't able to get a bus, but we had four people uh, go to, to Philadelphia to the EPA to meet with uh, a representative there who had agreed to set an appointment up. So in this in this car traveling to Philadelphia from where I live, which is a what about a six hour drive there and back, there were two Democrats and two Republicans in the in this car, <laughs> and it turned out to be so such a good thing. I mean, we were all stuck in this car together. We shared this interest in this environmental issue and how it was going to affect the people of this um, uh, this township and beyond. And we were really able to have terrific discussion about all of this and how we could work together. And there we were working together. So we get to Philadelphia. The guy who had the appointment with us did not come in to work that day. He was working from home. And we don't know if he was specifically trying to avoid us or not, but it would be pretty likely. So anyway, we said, well, we're here with our signs anyway. We're gonna go stand out front of the EPA and show our signs and just do our little demonstration. So we did. Um, it was very heartening that uh, inner, inner city Philadelphia people were interested in what we were doing. Uh, some of them really stopped and engaged us. Um, I was really impressed that of the small group of people who engaged us, the majority of those people were people of color, inner city, inner city black people who were really interested in what these mostly white people in Western Pennsylvania were doing and they supported us. But anyway, the, the guy who we had the appointment with at the EPA ended up calling on the phone and the two of our group ended up talking to him for about 45 minutes on the phone while we were standing out in front of his office. And um, the guy said, you know, nobody's ever um, questioned these applications before from these companies. You guys are the first people in all these years to question that. And um, he said that, and the one guy we had was kind of an expert on, um, uh, testing, not, not particularly uh, fracking uh, pollution, but uh, other types of, of fuel pollution. And he, he told the guy from the EPA, you know, this application is not complete. Um, it has, uh, you, you didn't, the guys didn't complete the survey. They didn't, they maybe checked off some boxes, but the content of what was in that application was not, was not suitable. So, it turns out we found out the other day that uh, because of what we did, our little, you know, little group of people that got together pretty uh, quickly uh, managed to uh, have this company withdraw their application to put this um, mm. <laughs> this fluid, which is radioactive, by the way, <laughs> um, from dumping this fluid in the water source in our county, our township. So. That's my story. That's a great story. Thank you very <laughs> much. And it's more important than just your county because it's empowering to people who hear it and are willing to do the same in their locality. You're very, you're very That's right exactly about that. Exactly right. And this is exactly what we're talking about. Well, congratulations, honey, because that was a great effort and a great example. Peggy, go ahead, honey. Okay. Thank she you. 
she has told the story about what I'm I'm going to talk about. Right. It isn't always the large important people. It's the people who put the intent. And I, I will be taking a class in manifesting intent. And I want to work on the acid water in Pennsylvania. Oh, I want yeah. to work work on Palestine, Ohio, and have that all dissipate. I want to help, I want to intent on healing people. And I am one person. If we all got together in our little groups, as they did in the car, their intent grew and grew and grew and grew in that car. And it went to where it had to go to make things happen. It's that simple. We don't have to worry about things falling apart. As people, we can get together and focus on our interest and send our intent. It's just through meditation and you ask for your helpers and you put your intent forth. Now, when they're in the car, you know, they weren't meditating and help that, but they were generating all that good energy to have something good come of it. And and I'm that's all. I'm gonna get involved in yeah, that you're myself. you're exactly right. And that's exactly what the lady did who had the Middle Eastern husband. And it's exactly what the woman did who worked for the Taurus uh, accounting firm. Right. That's what that's everybody... what the idea of the lion's gate that we just came out of is yeah. to be in alignment. Right. Exactly. Finding well, our by God, we're doing it. Right. Yeah. And it, it can be done by the little people, more or less, you know. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have, we'll have Liza lead the way. And she'll smack me if I say that. I no. have a closing question for yeah. you, Rick. Yeah, yeah go ahead. To help us all better understand mm -hmm. the Eris Pluto portion, can you tell us some of the good traits of Eris with buzzwords? Keywords for the positive traits. So yeah, she will. She will interrupt the meeting where everybody's table is full of shit. She will come in and up. She'll she'll disrupt the table. She'll stop it. She'll stop the Peter principle. She'll stop the people getting advanced for no reason, and she'll put an end to that junk. Yeah. That's what she does. Fairness, right? She is fairness at any cost. That's what she is. And that's that's a really bold thing to say. And I think it's much needed. But I think that's what you're talking about. So perhaps this will be some of the end to masking hypocrisy. The, the, when, the the Trump, when the Trump people got crazy about we're going to get behind Trump because he's going to drain the swamp. You saw a very healthy Arisian attitude there. That is a, that is what Eris does. Let's drain the swamp. But they didn't realize he was the, the main swamper out there. So yeah, that's exactly you just flip it. Just flip it. So we we're there more people are gonna do what we're we're doing here. You know, what we're doing and what she did with her trip. And, and other people coming together and, and I'm hearing about it all over the place lots of people are having grassroots campaigns because people are scared like you said they are scared or like uh, Claudia said and, and they're trying to find out what they can do and that's the good thing about Ares she doesn't care what she has to do she's going to do what she needs to and we got to keep her on the straight though because she can, yeah, Tamper has no clothes. That's right, Rachel. And we got to keep it on the straight and narrow that we're not getting out of commission like the dark side of Eris, which is what Trump is trying to do. Okay, everybody. It's been another wonderful evening. A very good evening. We're stirring up stuff, and it's all getting stirred up. <laughs> Way to go, Liza. Thank you, guys. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Liza. And thank you, Rick. Thank you. Rick. Thank Rick. you, everybody. Thank, thank you, Peggy. Thank you. Thank you, Bye, Rick. Bye, everybody. See you next week. Uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. Good night. Have a good week. Start at 6 